Hello everyone and welcome to our learning our webinar. I'm Kunalan and I'm excited to be your host for today's session. Today we have our expert trainer, Mr. Iskandar, and he'll be sharing very interesting topic about maximizing LinkedIn's potential strategy for effective uh, content marketing and networking. During the session, you may ask questions in the chat box below. Mr. Iskandar will answer the question at, at end of the session. Without waiting any longer, I hand over the floor to Mr. Iskandar. Thank you. Hello, hi, and thank you, Kunalan. Right, I would like to first thank all of Excel Academy team members for inviting me over for this lunch hour webinar session, learning hour webinar session. And today I will be sharing on um, maximizing LinkedIn potential strategies for effective content marketing and networking. Right, so let us go. Before we start, I would like to first introduce myself. My name is Iskandar Daniel, and I am an entrepreneur specializing in marketing research, planning and strategy together with business development. I have been personally involved in multiple uh, industries such as healthcare, medical sector, e-commerce, F&B, automotive, event management, digital marketing, advertising, training and consultancy, and also information technology IT. So these are some of my educational qualifications that includes HRD Corp Certified Trainer, Doctorate of Business Admin, which is currently ongoing, MBA from UNITA, and Bachelor of Petroleum Engineering from University Technology Petronas. Right. So these are some of the clients that I've served before that includes University Malaya, Maybank, BSN, and others. So let's not wait any longer. We should go to our topic of the day. Right. Before we proceed and uh, look into the social media platform LinkedIn, we should first understand the overview on how LinkedIn is made of. And hence, that is why I have read a journal uh, talking on the strength of weak ties. The strength of weak ties was first introduced by Mark Granovetter in his 1973 paper. So in this paper, he argued that while strong ties such as close relationships with your best friends and family are very important for emotional support, weak uh, ties... Sorry, sir. Hello, sir. Sorry for interrupt. Is that you sharing the screen? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sharing the screen right now. But we can okay. see that. Okay, sorry. Okay. Ah, okay. Right. So, right. This paper was first introduced by Mark Granovetter in his 1973 paper, which he argued actually, while strong ties such as close relationships with friends and family are important for the emotional support, weak ties such as more distant or casual relationship, meaning that your acquaintance, meaning that you know him from uh, from your friend and he's a friend of your friend. Okay, so that's just an example. Yeah, are more valuable in terms of providing access to new information and opportunities. Hence, that is why when we understand the strength of weak ties, we should learn on how to leverage on it. by utilizing LinkedIn, the place where you get to know a lot of people, but not for a strong relationship. So when we understand about the strength of weak ties, let us now talk about how to find good weak ties and to connect like a pro. First, one of the good way for you, one of the good strategy for you to network with people and to find good connections, I wouldn't say just good connections, but good weak connections are by using the filter function to find relevant people. So I'll bring you through LinkedIn, whereby, okay, you can see on how I do use the filter function to leverage on 
the social media platform so that I can get good weak connections. Say for example, okay, my bachelor of uh, my degree is actually from University Technology Petronas. Okay, so what I'll do is that I'll click on my previous university. Okay, and there's a function for me to okay to leverage on which is the alumni function uh, alumni button okay so here it will show some of the brief uh, some of the infographics on where they work you know where they live and so on but the most important part is on this part people you may know so these people are actually people who has been associated in university technology patronas okay so when when we scroll down we can start to connect with every single one of them right so this is just an example there is also another way that you can do this by tapping into your previous experience of your previous company say for example i have been an intern in patronas okay so definitely as we know patronas is not an education institution right however instead of alumni there is a button for us to find people who associate with patronas right so i click on the people function uh, button okay and i scroll down i can see numbers of people who is associated with patronas and this can also be one of the way for us to connect and to get good weak connections next i would say the next strategy would be for us connect to message in linkedin we have three types of connection we have a first degree connection which is actually our friend okay or in facebook we call it as friend but in linkedin we call it as connection we have also second degree connection which are those people that we have not yet connect but is a mutual from uh, our first degree connection and same goes with third degree connection whereby these people is not associated with us meaning that our first degree connection doesn't have anything to do with these people so these are the people who are considered as a third degree connection so let us look at our linkedin right so say for instance i'll search one name okay let's say uh let's just pick one name yeah uh, I say for example okay how do we define them by uh how do we define the degree of the connection you can see over this uh dashboard okay after their name there's there's a text stating second and if i if i see more people you can later on find out that there are also third degree connections as well yeah yep you can see here third plus okay so meaning that these people the third class is actually not associated with me it's not mutual from my first connections at all right okay do you know that in linkedin hard sell does not work hence soft sell is the best solution for this platform and that is also why we will learn on content marketing for linkedin normal question that I, I will say frequently ask questions when i go and train people okay they will ask me why should we use linkedin it's better for us to use facebook twitter tiktok and other platforms so i do not see any reason for me to use linkedin but here's the thing ladies and gentlemen the first one the first reason why you should use linkedin for content marketing is for you to build up your brand as a thought leader so for people personally for people we call them as key 
opinion leaders, right? But for businesses, we call them as a thought leader. So we would like to position our brand as a thought leader for that particular niche or industry. Second is that for you to grow a following and share relevant content. Third, for you to drive traffic back to your website. And fourth, to increase engagement and sales on your website. Right. There are seven steps to effectively build a content marketing strategy for LinkedIn. And I'll share with you, there's a simple seven steps so that it's easier for you to tap into LinkedIn even right after this task. Step number one is for you to define clear objectives for your LinkedIn content strategy. So these are some of the common LinkedIn objectives that includes introduce your business to a broader customer base, okay? Meaning that you want to tap a bigger and larger audience from the current customer that you have. Second, for you to share contents to contents to enhance your brand recognition. Okay, so basically, just to show people that you are an expert on that particular niche or industry. People know that. Oh, say for example, yeah, if you are a clothing brand, and you share about, uh, you know, the materials for the brand. Oh, this is cotton. This is uh, say microfiber and what are the difference between cotton and microfiber hence this is why we chose this material for our clothing so people will see you and you will position yourself as an expert in that particular niche next for you to build trust to attract new customers so definitely in linkedin the audience is a little bit different from the other platforms it's all about you look big and for the clients uh, to actually trust you based on your postings next for you to cultivate leads for your sales effort like i have mentioned before in linkedin hard sell does not work hence if you're looking for a direct conversion then maybe this is not the best platform for you. However, if you say that you would like to cultivate, meaning, you know, growing from, uh, from zero to a larger number of people, okay, for you to cultivate these people to then be your leads and then contribute to your sales effort, hence, that would be a better strategy for you. Next. Invite more signups to trials or demos. Okay. In LinkedIn, in LinkedIn, the people or the audience in LinkedIn are actually a lot of them come from professional backgrounds. These people are actually a bit more, um, I would say, particular, okay, and very um, specific. Hence, they would not be an easy target market for you to find for a direct conversion. They would love to try it out first and if it fits their objective, then they would buy, right? So that's why, again, if you like them to contribute to your sales effort, maybe you can use this, okay? So that they can sign up to your trials or demos. Next, building a community of loyal subscribers. I've seen one of my friend becoming, I would say, a key opinion leader in LinkedIn on corporate career. So she has built a large, a large base of loyal fans that every single post that she shared, these people would engage with her. And at one point, when she decided to create an ebook or create a revenue stream from her expertise, these loyal fans would then subscribe to her products, right? That is why you need to first define clear objective for your LinkedIn content strategy. If you are trying to capture two or three objectives in, in, in LinkedIn, I think it will not be the perfect strategy 
because it will confuse your audience. Maybe for some of you who are actually uh, is not working, okay, or maybe you are self-employed, or maybe you are a business owner, you can also, you know, uh, define your objective. Maybe, yeah, maybe, for you to become one of the key opinion leader in that particular niche of no or industry. That also works. With this primary goals and metrics, you can now determine the content that is suitable for, for your audience. Okay, so after you have defined the clear objective, okay, you have, you know what, what are the goals that you want, then you need to start research and understand your LinkedIn audience. Okay, so I've given some example over here. Okay, let's say, okay, your target audience are, uh, financial professionals, okay, you have to opt for topics that are appealing to them and center your content around the challenges and the needs of the financial professionals. Or, okay, their level of employment. You have to look at, okay, is your audience mostly made up of independent solopreneur? Or are you speaking to a manager and head of companies, okay? Or are you targeting mid-level employees who report to one or multiple higher ups? So yeah. this would determine the content and the style of content that you are writing. Next, LinkedIn Analytics offers user behavior and demographic insights. This data would provide you with insights and um, information as you get to know your audience. So when you do your postings, right, you can see who are actually looking at your postings. So let's say, for example, okay, we look at the second point, the level of employment. Maybe you can call it as a stereotype, but let us just assume for a scenario basis. Okay, if you're talking to a mid-level employees who report to one or multiple higher ups, these people would be um, more uh comfortable with a simplified version of writings with a i, I would say uh formal okay they love some informal content writings such as hebrew you know hebrew uh i'm currently writing this from olympic hotel kl and today i am teaching on uh maximizing LinkedIn potential strategies. Did you know that, bro? Okay, so that are those, um, I would say, language level that they are comfortable with. But let's say if you're talking to manager level from Patronas, for instance, these people would be more comfortable if you are writing in a formal style. Yeah, so meaning that your writing has to be very proper and have a good etiquette, okay? So these are the step two. Let's move on to the next step, okay? Step number three is for you to set topic areas and content types. So I'll show you some of the content types later on in, in, in yeah? But these are just some breakdowns. You have text posts, okay? You have also LinkedIn articles. I've also linked in newsletter, photo post, link post, call post, video post, and also document post. So I'll bring you through my LinkedIn again. Okay, so over here, start a post would mean just a text post. However, if you decide to put in a picture, say for example, this one, yeah, as this would be a photo post, right? Okay, so if you click more, then you can see there are also other functions that you can use, such as to create a poll, okay? So then you can input the questions over here, okay? Do you think LinkedIn, this for example, yeah? Is a good platform 
for professionals. Say for example, yeah. Then you input your options. Yes, no. And you can also add more options than that. Okay. You can then set the call duration from one day to two weeks. And once you're done, press done button. Okay. Next, you can also add a document over here. Say, for example, if you have a job vacancy post and there's a number of people that actually doesn't fit into your posters, you can input the document for people to read. And usually, who uses this? Actually, government agencies or GLCs who has tenders or grants uh, for them to share, you input a document over here. Okay. Let's just try one. Mm. Okay. Right. Okay, I'll input the document and I'll put in the title. Yeah. Team building activities. Okay. Then once I'm done, I can press done button. Okay. Right. Next, apart from this, you can also write a full article. Okay. So over here, under the start of post, you can see media, job, and write article. So just click on write article. Press next. And then you can put in a picture and start with the article. Okay. Let us try together. Okay. Right. OD. Okay. Right. So, credit to. Okay. Now, input the title of your article. Okay. Okay, so input your title and then you can start writing it. Yeah, here are top three reasons why it is important. Okay, then you can also bold this. Okay, or use an italic. Okay, right. So these are the way for you to write an article over LinkedIn. Next, ladies and gentlemen, okay, once you know which content type for you to use, now you can create an engaging content for LinkedIn. Okay, so let us try and start this together. Okay, I'll stop sharing and open up my whole uh, screen, share my whole screen. Okay. Right. Okay. So I'll just put in my notepad over here. Okay, my notepad over here. Okay. <coughs> so start with an introduction that demands attention and draw readers in. So let's try with it. Let us start with an introduction. Okay. I just saw. A friend getting fired right after. Okay. Within 24 hours of getting fired. Okay, so this would be your introduction that demands an attention and draws reader in. So when people see it, right, they'll say, like, oh, my friend's getting fired within 24 hours of getting hired. Why? Why Why is? Why does your friend get uh, gets fired within 24 hours of getting hired? So now they would like to read more and understand the context. Okay, so next, keep your sentences concise and engaging, meaning that you should not use any complex jargon, right? 
you can straight away you can straight away go and input the context yeah so now input the context okay and size okay so let's try to do this together okay my friend Amir has been hired by a famous oil and gas company in Malaysia yesterday. From what I heard, okay, from what I saw in his Instagram posting, posting he has been fired in just 24 hours of getting employment and employed okay. so why does that happen put some context over there okay make sure that whatever your story is it has to be authentic yeah so say for instance i think maybe one of the reason is that he breached his contract of showing private and confidentials confidential documents over his own instagram okay then put more some recommendations over here recommendations okay if you saw this post i would like to share some of the etiquettes that you should be okay, aware of to avoid this happen to you one two three okay if you think that this post is actually helpful please do share it you can you can save your connections career and life okay so these are some of the tips for you to start create an engaging content for linkedin right okay let's move forward okay step number five you have to supplement own content with a curated content okay let's see for it okay if we look at our um our Okay, if you look at our post just now, okay, if let's say for instance, you do not have any uh, ideas of past experience, you would like to create a storytelling, say for example, this is not true, yeah, you have to also put in your own content and hence this is why I put in the recommendations over here. Okay, so these are my own content. So just to share with them uh some of the things that i know uh and it is from me lah okay yeah. right so step number six would be to share and promote your content strategically so a successful content strategy requires a consistent publishing schedule i would not say uh you have to do it every day and twice a day or thrice a day but if you can try to make it consistently every day at least one postings okay and manage through a link in content calendar to prevent missing opportunities and repetitive content so what you can do is that you can schedule through your content okay in one week say for example you have um maybe on your sundays then you can uh, you can uh, schedule for monday up until saturday yeah and then for the next sunday you can reschedule it again for the for the other week okay the best times to post on linkedin you have to experiment it because your 
crowd would be different than other people. So there are no secrets as to at what time the content post would get uh, engagement because it depends on your audience and only you know your own audience. Hence, that is why you need to start experimenting at what time that they are actually active. Okay. So let us just stereotype. Okay. You can experiment before or after work. Okay. You can also work, uh, work around. Okay. And see experiment during the lunchtime or around the lunchtime. Okay. And maybe if you have international audience, you need to diversify your, your posting times to accommodate their different time zones. Okay. Meaningful interactions can lead to your content being shared with a broader audience creating a ripple effect that promotes your brand and its message. So let's say when you post, the first people who can see the content is actually your connections, the first degree connections. So if your content is actually very helpful and people like it, they will like or they will uh, comment or they can also share it. However, in I mean, by whatever way that they interact with it, their connections can then later on see the post that you have created even if they just like it and without commenting it okay so once they like it your content will appear to their connections so it will create a ripple effect from you from the first degree connection up to the second degree connection and if the second degree connection um you know if the second degree connection is actually uh like uh, I mean, they like your content, then it will push it through to the third degree connections. Okay. Otherwise, you can also extend your content reach with LinkedIn in ads. Okay. If I do have time later on, I'll show you just a brief tool for you to work with LinkedIn ads, which offer precise targeting beyond your network. Okay. Right. And last but not least, for the step number seven, you need to measure your results and tweak your strategy as needed. So you need to keep an eye on your LinkedIn page analytics. You can see the demographics. You can see over here, how do people find your content? Yeah. And you can also use tools like Google Analytics to set up goals for tracking conversions, such as for sub form submissions, free trial signups, email subscriptions, and even e-commerce sales. Okay. However, ladies and gentlemen, okay, just to share with you a little bit, let us look through our LinkedIn. Okay, so just now I mentioned about TikTok ads. This is where you can find TikTok ads, yeah? This is where it is, advertise, okay? Okay, I cannot access to this because I need to set up my two-step verification first. But however, this is the place where you can actually push your content to a broader audience. But you need to pay lah, okay, for LinkedIn ads, right? So let's come back again. Right. Okay, so these are just some of the do's and don'ts, okay? So what do you have to do is to stay true to your brand, okay? If you know your objective, if you have created your brand identity, you need to stay in the line and you have to align with it, right? Next, do mix up your content, okay? Meaning that you can always jumble it up with a photo post, some videos, some tech posts, some... Um, article post you know right and you need to understand your audience so that you can keep them uh, interested in your postings next optimize for search okay embrace helpful tools such as maybe chat gpt 
for you to create more engaging text generation contents okay and you also have to share beyond linkedin so let's say for instance you have created a post in linkedin maybe you can share to your whatsapp status facebook stories you know facebook posts and so on okay these are some of the don'ts right do not write articles directly on linkedin okay right do not publish irregularly actually it doesn't mean that you have uh, you you cannot write articles directly on linkedin you can write on linkedin but you have to share it outside because if you if you did not share beyond linkedin then that would be a problem so a lot of people they write articles but they are not getting traction why because they do not share in their own postings okay let's see if you have created your articles you have written down your articles right then you need to share the link of your article inside your posting so that people are aware that oh this kind of is writing this article on this particular topic okay next do not publish irregularly meaning that okay just like i've mentioned before you have to be consistent whether it's two days once okay or maybe once uh, or maybe thrice a week okay you have to be consistent okay don't overwhelm your connections okay only find good weak connections that are actually people who who you can leverage to okay even if you have a lot of number of connections it doesn't mean that it will help your journey okay as a business owner or to uh, contribute to yourself okay it's not about the number of connections but the number of good connections and number of good weak connections okay don't use user generated content without permission okay do not use other people's uh, content without their permission okay that one i think uh, although it is not uh, a part of copyright issues but however it is just uh, morally wrong lah okay to use other people's content without their own permission okay so these are just some of the tips that I can share it over to you. And maybe if you like to learn it more, you can contact Excel Academy later on. Right. So maybe can we open up the floor for any questions? Should we have any? Maybe Kunalan? Uh, Kunalan, you there? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions, Kunalan? Uh, okay, wait, sir. Okay, uh, let me take a moment to collect the question. Huh? Can, can, no worries. Okay. Uh, it seems no questions, sir. So uh, I let to so share about my upcoming training session, sir. Okay. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, okay, for next year, 2024, we are offering digital marketing masterclass, CapCut for video marketing, Microsoft Excel Basic, Intermediate and Advanced, Canva Design Bootcamp, AI tools for content creation and marketing, Power BI, and SEO SEM courses. So if you're interested in learning on one of these courses, you can contact us. Thank you for your, thank you all and have a good day. Please follow and like in social media and get, get in touch with us. Thank you, Mr. Kanda. Mm. Mm. Uh, we... Yes, sir. Yeah, we do have a question over here from yeah, one no, of our sir. viewers. Wait, huh? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Okay, the question is, hi, is educational post or storytelling post would be a good choice to engage audience? Okay, these are just some of my tips. Okay, I've been in uh, LinkedIn for quite some time before I uh, I decided to take a break from from uh, social media for a while. When you, when you create an educational post, okay, it depends on your connection. If your connection is your audience, 
hence uh, then it will actually contribute to a uh, number of en engagement good number of engagement however if let's say your current connections are not within the line of the niche or industry that you you want to share it uh, uh the, the the post is about then it will not help you in in uh getting more engagement okay meaning that for example if it's just a general a generic educational post maybe it will relate with some if not majority of the connections that you have but let's say if you are doing in the business uh i would say fashion line but your connections are all uh, corporates in say oil and gas company then the engagement you would not get any good engagement okay so for this question right i would say you have to mix up both of them okay some you have to try uh, I, I mean you have to jumble it up maybe from a one week calendar uh, three of them is educational post and maybe another three of them is storytelling so this storytelling however it has to be jumbled up together with your knowledge if you can see uh, just like my slide before this just check it again for a while okay right you can see over here Supplement the storytelling together with your own content so that people can relate your storytelling with the educational post that you have posted the other day. Okay, so you have to jumble it around lah. Kalau you uh, decide to only play with educational post, people will get bored because, you know, uh, for some reasons, people need to uh, learn, but at the same time, they need to have some entertainments as well. Uh, so that's just my take lah on this matter. so far that's all sir thank you so much sir have a good day okay thank you so much bye bye, -bye.